Hi there, I'm James and this is Dennis, and we're going to step back into Georgian times to check out a card table. Today we are starting at the Jeffrey Museum, which is dedicated to period furniture. We are going in search of inspiration for creating a side table. We want to make something similar to this card table, but to look inside I need special gloves. Alright, here we go. I'm just going to take this drawer out carefully. Um, dovetailed corners, but I reckon we could do a little something with a router to recreate these, would you reckon? Yeah. Got nice and solid in those old yeah. days if you want a good one. And as well as, obviously, this was done by hand, but you can always tell when it's done by hand because you can see the marking gauge line which someone's drawn That's in. That's right, yeah, left in. Down. It's beautiful. Right, also, this one's got, because it's a card table, it's got a hinged top. We won't be putting a hinged top on ours, but um, it's not necessary. That ours is a side table. Instead of this sort of O-style bracket, we could put a, um, a fret-type bracket. I'm just going to take these gloves off and see that Dennis is getting a little bit nervous. For those who don't know what fretwork is, it's the fancy design on this shelf unit. Right, let's do some measurements. 770, 390, and this should be an old fashioned 29 inches. There's our sizes I've been done with, let's go and get some designs done. I've got my own ideas for the design, but will then agree? There's the design. I think it's a bit top heavy, I would have liked to have seen it got narrow at the bottom. Narrow at the bottom. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things with this design. It 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 doesn't. <laughs> you pays your money. You takes your choice. <laughs> and this is where the fretwork comes in. On the brackets. Is it going to be a tough one? No. No. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> Just to see it finished. I think it's going to be a nice piece. Brilliant. I'm well happy with that. Ah, oh, mahogany. Then he seems happy with the design, so we just need to sort out the right timber before we get cracking. We're going to use Brazilian mahogany for our side table. It is expensive, but it has a distinctive grain and a terrific colour. Right, great. We're ready to construct. All right, we've got our drawing. Yeah, to work nice, too. delicate little job. Though. Yeah, this is a nice job. I'm really looking forward to this. I think the first thing, you've got to mark your legs out and your rails. Top, sort of, what would you call these top parts? They're, they're, they're still rails. Yeah, still rails, it's running yeah. around the top there. They're nice, aren't they? I like these, these are going to be great. That mahogany is absolutely gorgeous colour, isn't it? Whilst Den's marking out the rails, I'm looking at the overhang on the tabletop, but Den's got his own ideas about that too. 12 mil either side, yeah. I, I, I would go 20 either, uh, and make it 40 mil off of that. Well, that allows us an overhang of 20, which is a bit much, I think. No, you could never get a table just going on there. You always get the overhang. Yeah, I'm I, saying 12. Yeah, I don't, I don't, 12's nothing at all. You've got to go 20 a minimum. It's a design view. Go 20 then. You sure? Yeah. Can I have my own way? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Cut those two off there. That's your front and your back. All right, that's your front. There's the front, there's the back. Right. Sure. Can we write on them now then, so we know forever? Yeah. You've got something I can see flipping red. Red on mahogany. <laughs> can you write on there, please? You've got so, that. Yeah, but I can see that. But that red, we are not using red on mahogany. You can't see it. Please. Lovely. We can read that. You know it'd be like the old... Where was that mark? Go on, get on with it. All right. <laughs> side. Side, just right side, please. Just right. Well, they won't do it, go anywhere else. Yeah, but it's just to know which side the grain's on. We want to keep them the same. Come on. Let's do it properly. They won't go anywhere else. I know they won't, but we want the, the, the grain. It's a rectangle, not a square type. Good. Oh, it's all cheeky today. I'm just going to cut out the four sides of the table. Yeah. 
Okay, the panels are cut to size. I'll work on them shortly. But first I've got to deal with Den. He's now got a problem over the legs being flush with the front. You should set the leg back. You did, but no, not on this table. You, know what? you, you do what you want to do. Look, he always hates it to start with. I just hope this one you're, you're going to like at the end. It's one of those, isn't it? It's always something, isn't it? You got, you're going to get your jaw flush there, obviously, with your round in the front. But I still think you should have a break back there, not front. Yeah. I, I heard what you thought the first time. <laughs> Come on. So that's the line of air mortis. Yeah, and then down 20, so we don't want to break out the top. I don't feel to put a little haunch in there. Yeah. All right, and that's going to be your mortis right the way through there. Yeah, haunch. and a little haunch. The reason we put a haunch um, towards the top of the legs is because if the mortise went all the way up to the top, it would make the leg very weak at the top. The haunch is uh, basically a mortise which doesn't go quite as deep. How deep are we going to go? It goes about 10 mil deep, 10 I suppose. Well, isn't it? usually width, width and depth, isn't it? Oh, is it? So in this case, yeah. nine. What we're going to do is we're going to keep the front out of one piece so that all the grain matches. And this is a gorgeous piece of mahogany to use. It's got some lovely figure there. The way we're going to do this is we're going to slice along using the table saw along with the actual drawer and then we'll cut the drawer front out so then we'll get a perfect square and then we'll actually join it back back together again. Well hello James, I've finished this. Now this is the legs, alright. Now you want the grain on the front there which is seen, right? It's where the front of the legs. You've got your rail, your drawer front rail coming in there. Yeah. Your side rail is coming in there. Brilliant. And obviously with your back one there. Right, now I'm just going to mortise the legs. And I've got a 9mm chisel. Once you've done the first mortise, the windows at the side of the mortise will clear it quite a lot of the chips. One leg done, two mortises. When I've done, finished the, doing the, the other three, we set the stop to do the honcha. While Sten's doing that, I'm cutting out the tenons on the side panels. What it is, my mate Dennis makes me a little bit scared about doing them a bit too sloppy because he does get the ump with that. So um, I'd rather just find and adjust them by hand into the mortises rather than do sloppy tenons and then there's no way back. Anyway, let's go and see what you reckon. They're alright then, a bit tight. They're tight, just, just ease just a fraction. They're nice and tight, but don't go too mad with it. Right, you're not annoyed with me for doing just, them sloppy just, though. Just, just ease them. It's going to adjust them slightly using the shoulder plane. Just ease them. Gonna... Well, what about that then? They have to be pretty tight, as you say, because they're only tiny little tenons, aren't they? We're going to label these as we go along. Yeah, we, we can't do it. It can't no. be any other way, look. Front, front, you can't See, go any other can't way. Can't we just put a little A or something, just to show you? A, A. I know what you mean. You all right, all right. Any other way. All right. <laughs> we won't label these because they can't go in any other way. Look at that, then. Gods are with us. It's vital these joints are perfect because we can't rectify problems later on. Great. Putting things together as a dry assembly really helps to check the snugness of every joint. That's great. Well, that was painless, wasn't it, Dan? I reckon, though, now we've done all those joints, Dan, and they're all looking nice. A cup of tea's in order. Right, we're ready to um, biscuit joint together the base. We've got a solid base underneath of our unit. 
lens marking where the biscuits will go. Uh, here they are, they're little beach pieces of wood, cut to shape. Thank okay. you. Eat them. Don't taste like biscuits. There we are. <laughs> oh, look at how speedy. Come on. Hang on. The glue's oh, going whoa. off. Whoa. <laughs> Speedy's rushing me to cut the slots for the biscuits before we glue the piece together. Oh. That's the end of it. <laughs> What's that done there? Right. Missed a bit, you want to lemon yeah? You? You're painting at home, missed a bit. So what do you used to use in the old days? Is it a bit of animal glue or something? Fat bones. Did you go out and like cull yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, you go out and shoot them, yeah. <laughs> now, haven't I told you before, never put them on the same oh, side? Oh, shush, I've got a plan. Hang on, just, just give me a minute. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> In normal circumstances. <laughs> Right, how's that? How's that? It's fine. Always have cramps on both sides. I'm very happy with that, so we can leave it overnight to dry. Right, we're ready to cut the actual draw front out of the front rail. You know, I'll leave that with you, because I've got other things to do. OK. I'll see you. Thanks, mate. Don't want to get involved in all that. This has got to be accurate. If I make a slip here, then it'll kill me. To fit the panel back together, as well as using glue, I'm going to use some dowels. A little dowel. All that needs now is a cramp pot on it. I'll leave that to glue to dry overnight. Good it.